Hello and welcome to the Longevity Learning Lab. Today we're going to take a few minutes to show how to set up an argon bottle and connect it to a TIG welding machine prior to starting to work. So that's something that we frequently have to do either when we're setting up a brand new machine or when we run out of gas. We're going to have to take and remove the gas bottle from the system and replace it with a full one. So doing that safely and in the proper way is a big important thing of working in the welding environment. So handling these bottles and making sure that we don't uh, misuse or abuse them or they end up in a situation where they shouldn't uh, is a key thing to understand. So hang out for a few minutes and let's connect up the argon to the back of our welding machine here so that we can get to work. Here are the markings on a typical argon bottle. Here's the safety cap that belongs on top. Here's one style of regulator flow meter and there's also another type that has a ball that floats up and down in the cylinder. We'll need a hose to go from the bottle to the machine and here's what the typical connection looks like on the back of a machine and if we want to save some gas we better check on our flow settings on the front. Making sure the bottle is secured and chained is a must. Okay, so let's go ahead now and get our regulator and our hose connected up to our welding machine. So the first thing that we need to do before we make sure that we do anything that I'm about ready to show you is we need to make sure that the bottle is chained up and secured so that it's stable and connected to something that will not allow it to tip over or to fall over. So if you've got your bottle chained up or secured in a fashion that it won't tip over or fall over, now we can go ahead and we can remove the safety cap. So the safety cap should be on the bottle at any time that we're moving or transporting the cylinder. So once we get the safety cap off of it, we want to set that off in a secure location so that we have access to it later on when we remove this stuff and we prepare to move the bottle around. So the next thing I want to do is, is to make sure that there's no debris or any crud or anything in there. So I'm just going to slightly open the bottle for a second here and let a little gas escape. Okay, now that we're assured that there's no crud or junk inside there, now we can go ahead and we can make sure that we connect up the regulator flow meter next. So I'm going to use this diaphragm style regulator flow meter here with some round gauges on it. Um, and what I'm going to do before I put it on here is, is I'm going to make sure that that regulator adjusting screw is backed out and it's not depressing the diaphragm in any way. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to connect the nut that's on the back of the regulator into the connection on the top of the argon bottle. So now that I've got that in place, and I'm going to use an adjustable wrench to come in here and I'm going to tighten the nut and I'm going to go in the clockwise direction here because these are standard right hand threads there okay and I make sure that I get that cinched on there real tight okay the next thing I'm going to do is is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get the hose and the hose has some special connections on it here for argon and and uh, inert gases so I'm going to go ahead and connect that right up to the gas hose connection here and hold that in place and then once again using the adjustable wrench or if you've got it a gas wrench I'm going to lightly tighten this down and make sure that it's secure so those are metal to metal connections so once they're firm and they're tight over tightening doesn't do anything for us now we can proceed to connecting the other end of the hose over to the welding machine so now let's take a look at that connection. Now that we've made the connection over on the bottle side, let's go ahead and connect the hose to the back of the machine. So here you can see the argon connection and the hose. And we're just going to put it right in the fitting connection here. Tighten that up. And then once again, using the adjustable wrench, I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down until it feels firm making sure that I don't over tighten and strip it out. Okay, now that we've got the machine and the hose connected, now let's go ahead and set the gas pressure and flow rate on the machine and on the regulator so that we can get our machine set up so that we can start welding. 
So the first thing I want to do is, is make sure that this regulator adjusting screw is backed out and is free of the diaphragm. So I don't want that any inward pressure on that diaphragm inside the regulator. The next thing I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up the valve on the top of the cylinder. Since this is a high pressure cylinder of inert gas, this has a double seating valve on the top and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open that all the way up. As I open that up, you see that needle on the right come up to tell us how much gas pressure is in the actual bottle. So this bottle looks like it has about 2300 PSI inside of the cylinder itself. On the left hand side here we see the gauge that tells us the flow rate going through the hose and out to the machine. So we're going to set that next. So to do that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn on the machine first. So with the machine turned on now we can proceed at setting the gas pressure or gas flow rate on the left hand gauge. So now I'm going to slowly start to turn this in and I'm looking to get about 20 CFH on that gauge. So I'm going to slowly turn this in and that screw or this knob depresses the diaphragm and there we can see the gauge slowly coming up and I'm going to turn that up to 20 CFH. Now I need to actually check that when the gas is flowing and when we're actually welding. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to depress the foot control and we can see that the needle drops down. So I'm going to adjust that up a little bit higher until I have 20 when it's flowing. So I can let the gas time out and then I can press it again and I can see that the needle returns right back to 20 CFH. So now we're set up and we're ready to weld. So that's our basic setup to get going. Okay, so now we've gone ahead and we've done our welding job and it's time to shut down and go home. So now what we need to do is kind of reverse the process. So the first thing that we're going to do is, is we're going to go over here and we're going to turn off the bottle of gas. That's going to be our first spot there. So these valves on the top of the cylinders are notorious for leaking. So if I don't turn that off, there's a good possibility when I come next time that some or all of the gas will have leaked out. The next thing I want to do is, is back out <coughs> or back out the regulator adjusting screw here and also depress the foot control to get the gas to bleed off completely. When I see both of those completely off then I can continue to back out this regulator adjusting screw the balance there so that it's loose and free. When I have this loose and free it's not pressing on the diaphragm inside and that's going to add a lot of life and longevity to the valve into the regulator itself. So that'll uh, save you a lot of trouble with gas flow rates over time if you don't leave this depressed in all the way. So there we go, we're ready to go. If I was done with the cylinder itself or with the welding operation and I needed to finish up, what I would want to do is come over here and get my adjusting wrench, adjustable wrench here get it on the cylinder, go ahead and break that nut free, remove that, and then replace the safety cap. on the top of the bottle. And then at that point we could if we wanted to unchain the bottle and move it to a new location or return it to the rack if it is empty. So thanks again for taking a few minutes out of your day to learn how to operate or to use the argon bottle and gas connections to a TIG welding or gas tungsten arc welding machine. If you like what you see subscribe to our YouTube channel and check back here often to see more informative videos like this in the area of welding and fabrication. Thanks a lot and have a great day.